Welcome to the podcast Friday Feels, brought to you by the Office of Counseling and Wellness at Berkeley College. I'm your host and personal counselor, Sarah Nickerson. Join our journey with Berkeley students as they navigate the challenges of the current pandemic with strength, creativity, and wisdom. New episodes released every Friday. Thanks for listening. All right. Well, Nicole, welcome to Friday Fields. We're so happy to have you here on this very snowy, snowy day. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm a little tired, but the snow creates sort of like a nice, peaceful experience. So I'm glad for that. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm very comfortable, but cold. I know. I know. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Anything that you want to share? Um, Your major, your name, what you like to do for fun, anything at all. I'd love to hear. Okay. Well, um, I'm currently majoring in legal studies, pursuing my bachelor's degree. Um, My name is Nicole Locke. I'm 24 years old. I reside in good old Buffalo, New York. Nice. I'm home of the snow. (laughs) Yeah. Um, In my free time, when I carve out some, um, I do like to read. I do like to do arts and crafts. I've been Mm. into these diving diamond painting kits lately that are on fabrics. So I've really been doing that when I have a spare moment. I know my roommate, she had one of those and she said it really helped to calm her because it's so concentrated. Like you're picking each little, little like gem and putting it in the right color section. Do you find that to be the, the same for you as well? It's definitely a stress reliever for me. So I do it all the time when I can. Oh, I love that. What's the, um, like, what's the one that you're doing right now? What is it of? Mine is currently of Harry Potter. So it's specifically a Hufflepuff symbol. Nice. So yeah. Big, so it's probably going to take me about three or four months to do that one. Wow. I love that though. That's really good. Um, I know you had mentioned earlier when we were talking before that you are currently studying for your LSATs. Yes, I am. I'm taking that in February. That's amazing. So the next step for you is going to be law school then? Yes. Fall 2021. I am shooting. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. What schools are you interested in in going to? Well, my top two are between Syracuse and Albany Law School. Nice. What what kind of got you interested in being a lawyer? There's a lot of things that got me interested, but I think the main point happened when I um, went into the hospital for a routine surgery and it winded up being major. It was supposed to be laparoscopic, but it winded up being a laparotomy, which is an open open surgery. Whoa. So um, after a whole bunch of months of recovery and going to a new OBGYN, I found out from her that... Um, this was something that could have been prevented. So wow. It really did steer me more than I, you know, previously was into studying health law in particular to really figure out, okay, you know, how do I help others like me who went through a malpractice experience? Because I didn't even wow. know, like, what steps to take. And I'm still not sure whether or not I'm going to follow through just because I'm so busy. But I yeah. help others who are going through the same thing or have went through the same thing and really don't know what to do or what signs to look for. Yeah. Yeah. So something sounds like you want to go into something um, like in the medical space, um, like helping people through situations in which maybe they're hospitalized or something went wrong and, and they're not really sure what to do from there. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. There, I mean, medical malpractice is so common. There's um, I took a class in, when I was in college on health communications and they had us read all of these different um, journal articles and and all this research that said how common it is for medical professionals to make mistakes and how often because we are the client or the the patient or whatever, we're not inclined to ask questions because we're like, oh, well, they're the doctor. Um, but basically that class just talked about the importance of of having good communication, of, of talking about um, you know, what is going to happen in surgery? Why did it happen? Why did this not happen? So I can definitely see how it would be great to have also a legal professional that could help navigate that, you know, that process. And I would also recommend for anybody who's thinking about getting a surgery, because it was actually my first one ever last year, and get a health proxy. I'd highly recommend a health proxy because for me, 
of course, me thinking it was laparoscopic, I thought I'd come out and be fine, but I wasn't. So to have mm -hmm. my father as a health proxy to be that voice for me when I was not, I was mm -hmm. not able to, um, that's a really yeah. good thing. I think people really hesitate or don't think that it's needed and it mm -hmm. definitely could come in handy. And what does a health proxy do? A health proxy, what they do is they basically speak on your behalf. Um, you can edit it to um, have it only be certain issues or any medical issues. So um, for my dad, he has access to all my medical records. Um, he can reach out to the doctor for me and speak on my mm -hmm. behalf on something. If it's something, you know, I'm not really comfortable talking to the doctor about or when right. I was in recovery from my um open surgery and I had that wound there, I was in so much pain, I didn't want to talk to anybody. So oh, he was yeah. able to speak to people on my behalf for me and wow. you know, take care of things when I really didn't want to. Wow. That's good that you had that support available to you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And with me being at work, you have to have the um, that whole work leave of absence thing taken care of. So he was able to take care of that too with the health proxy. So it really yeah. helped with a lot of stuff. Oh, that's amazing. Well, what kind of helped you through that time mentally and emotional? Were there certain things that helped you to keep persevering, to keep moving forward? Um, if you can remember, or even after, like what are some of the things that helped to ground you and to make you feel like it was going to be okay? Honestly, it was a real struggle for the first month. I couldn't sleep because I was in so much pain. I was barely eating. I lost a yeah. lot of weight. Um, it was really bad, but school really did ground me. Um, it was actually my passion, although I did have to take a break from school because it did come become too overwhelming. Mm. Um, but it really was my goals and my passions of, okay, Nicole, like you really want to make sure that you have this time now to take this break. When you come back, you have to be stronger than ever ever because, you know, you want to hit that goal of going to law school in 2021. So mm -hmm. that was the thing that kept me really grounded. And I spent the time that I took off break from school um, to really focus on law schools and, you know, preparing for my LSAT and just doing things to take my mind off of what yeah. was going on and um, helping me in my recovery was really my passions. And I know it's not like that for some people, but you know, with the support of my family and the support of school, which is something I really enjoy more than anything else, mm -hmm. um, it really pushed me to get yeah. through it. Yeah. Just sort of having those future goals and, and that supportive community around you. What, what was it about school that kind of kept you going? You say you really loved it. What do you love about it? For me, I like the challenges. So no matter if it's a math class, which I really don't like, or a science yeah. class or an English class, it's just I like having that extra goal. Because of course, when you go to school, your goal is to get a degree. And I like having that goal of being able to obtain something. So that's what really kept me going because I was going for my associates at the time. And, you know, taking that break hit me because I was supposed to graduate that December. But having this in the back of my head, okay, like, you know, when you come back, if you finish strong enough, you'll be able to finish with pretty good grades and, you know, go on to your bachelor's degree. That's really, you know, something that I love having that goal yeah. to obtain. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes like when life is really hard, we want to give up or kind of go to sleep or whatever. Um, but I think sometimes we miss out on challenges because we view challenges as obstacles or as something too difficult to overcome. But if we can instead view our challenges as opportunities, like you're saying, to grow, to challenge ourselves, um, to move forward to the next level, they can actually be quite enjoyable. And that's great that you have found the challenges that really make your heart sing. Sounds like you have found the place where I think there's a quote that says your deep joy and the world's deep need meet. Uh, and that's, that's really amazing. It's hard to find that. I mean, I credit it all to my family and I've been having some horrible luck on medical stuff lately. I actually had surgery mm -hmm. in July of this year. And then I had two scares where I was rushed to a hospital in September with pneumonia. So wow. all I can do is change, turn these challenges into opportunities for myself to make myself stronger, to push even further, um, to get to yeah. where I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. What gives you a sense of hope? Hmm, what gives me a sense of hope? That's a good question. I think what gives me a sense of hope, honestly, 
is honestly, weirdly enough, looking at my grades. It gets yeah. Hard. I'm like, okay, A's in every class. How am I doing it? I have hope because no matter mm -hmm. what obstacle has been thrown at me, I continue to succeed and I take these challenges and turn them into opportunities and I don't let anything get to me. And I think my first experience in 2019 when I did have my first surgery really helped me with my second one and my hospital stays. So I, mm. the grades give me hope when I look at my grades and I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. I, that week I was in the hospital, but I got a hundred on this assessment. Oh, that gives me the hope to push on. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings up such another wonderful point, which is that if we don't keep moving forward, we don't get to see what we're made of. We don't get to see the strength that is inherent within us. We don't get to see our own resilience and those new experiences can give us the motivation that we need to move forward. I, I can do it even when everything is falling apart. I am able to move forward even when it hurts, even when I feel like I'm suffering. That's really, really amazing that you were able to, to push through that and to keep moving forward and to see those results as well. Absolutely. And, you know, what I'm getting now from doing these law school forums um, is that it's going to be just as hard as what I'm going through now or in, or yeah. even more difficult. So to have these obstacles actually helped me. These challenges helped me to prepare for law school because when I go in, I think I'm going to be stronger by going through these things. Oh, yeah. And to be a lawyer, you really have a, have to have a lot of tenacity, like a lot of assertiveness and drive and push and to be able to fight for your clients and fight for what's right. And so that's a really beautiful way to look at it, that these experiences, while they have sucked, have also been very meaningful and purposeful in shaping you, you know, into the person that you are and the person that's going to be able to fight for those people who are just starting out on their journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel great for doing it. And honestly, I wouldn't change a thing about what I've went through because, I mean, I've changed my health around, which is something mm -hmm. I was really lacking in. So I've lost over 30 pounds since October wow. 1st. I changed wow. my health habits and I'm feeling much better. Um, I have a doctor's appointment next week and I'm hoping that the asthma that I did have um, from the pneumonia is reversed and I'm not on mm -hmm. any medications anymore. Wow. That is amazing, Nicole. I can't believe that. Like you have really taken charge of and, and changed things around for yourself. That is incredible. All I can do is sit and look at myself and go, Nicole, what do you want to be? What mm -hmm. do you want to get from your own life? What is your goal? Mm -hmm. My goal is to be a lawyer. I, in order to be a lawyer, I have to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like looking at what it is that we want and then changing those things that could affect it. And sometimes that takes like a bird's eye, eye view, right? And so it sounds like getting sick kind of allows you to see all these parts that seem like they wouldn't be connected, but are all really in, interconnected. Like, yeah, you can't be a lawyer if you're not healthy or you can't, you know, finish your schoolwork if you're not taking care of your mental health, your emotional health. Um, that's great that you are sort of able to look at all these different parts and, and address them as a whole. Absolutely. Um, it's something that, you know, I'm not going to lie on my health part. It did take a lot of pushing from of my parents. I was like, when I got better after um, my first surgery and I had my pulmonary embolisms, I was like, I'm going to eat and I'm going to eat, eat, eat until I can't eat anymore. And they're like, you really need to stop eating. And I just wouldn't do it. And then after the pneumonia, I was, something was lit a fire in me and I said, you know what, I got to do it or else I'm not going to be able to do anything I want to do, which is law. So I had to yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, my last question to you would be if you had to give any encouragement, words of advice to other Berkeley students at this time in life, what would they be? Well, this time, especially with COVID, I would I would tell anybody who may be in a spot where they're feeling discouraged or they're feeling down about something to really look at the bigger picture. Mm. Um, just like with me, my bigger picture in the sense of all of these challenges and obstacles that I've had was being a lawyer, whatever that bigger picture is to really take a look at that and really focus on that bigger picture instead of the challenges and obstacles that you're facing along the way. Trust me, when you're mm -hmm. you're going to look back 
and you're going to be like, wow, those challenges really helped me be what I am today, a stronger person, um, a stronger mother, stronger father, sister, brother. I feel like I'm a stronger person because of it, a stronger daughter. Mm -hmm. So I would really just say take those that discouragement, anything that's making you feel discouraged or hopeless and really take a look at it and go, okay, this is something that's going to help me with my bigger picture. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think you are such a wonderful example for other Berkeley students. And, And so does this mean, are you graduating? My goal is to graduate in August 2021. I'm really trying to figure out one class. Um, It's a math class. I have to really try and figure out how I'm going to wiggle that in because I'm just, I'm doing a little too many classes right now. So I kind of want to push that back. My hope is August, but not August. It'll be December for sure. Yay. So you're so close to the finish line. That's amazing. (laughs) I'm really proud of myself. I did this in like a year. (laughs) You should be proud of yourself, man. I'm proud of you and I barely even know you. And I'm so excited to see where you end up and what you end up doing and all the good that you, you know, do in the world and for other people, Nicole. I mean, you have an amazing story and I'm I'm sure that this is just the beginning of your story and that there's going to be so many more parts with obstacles and challenges, but also wonderful parts where you grow and you change and, and you also affect the people around you for good. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk today and for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, take care of yourself. Okay, Nicole? You too. Thank you. All right. Bye. That's all for now. Join us next week for another episode of Friday Feels. Enjoy your weekend and stay safe. Be well.